Hello, this is NBC's Brian Williams, here with another video game review. Today, I've been feeling nostalgic, so I figured I'd re-experience a game from my childhood. The game in question is Spider-Man and the X-Men, Arcade's Revenge. Now the first thing that must be addressed is the cast, Spider-Man and the X-Men. When you're a kid, this is like Justin Bieber meets the Jonas Brothers, the world could just explode. Now the game starts with some comic book storyline, and to be honest I've never read this, nor do I give a hoot. Despite the game's title, the only character in this beginning part is Spider-Man. Is this a power-up? Well, I guess not. Now this level is pretty easy, but what should I expect from the first level? Watch this, after exploring this level a little bit, I found myself at a dead end. I know this is the end because I can vaguely remember running through this wall as a kid. I remembered that, but I forgot an important aspect of this level. Remember that item I couldn't pick up? Well, it turns out that's actually what has to be done before you exit this level. But, for some reason, you have to collect the power-ups in a specific order. It only took me a few minutes to find this spot. But now I have to go back and painstakingly pick up each and every power-up. Oh boy, Bardo. Now, you're supposed to utilize your spidey sense to find the power-ups, but the fucking thing doesn't even flash an arrow until you're close enough to see the item. So it's just pointless. Okay, now finally I can move on from this. Why do you have to do this every time you start the game? So after the first level, you now have access to the other characters. Well, since women are inferior I'll try Storm's level first. Oh shit, oops. What's with her life burn, Bubbles? Why is the foreground so prevalent here? Were they so impressed with their three-dimensional depth simulation that they had to ruin the gameplay? I hate games with water levels that require you to periodically come up for air. It's just annoying and totally negates the action element. I forgot about this, and died accordingly. Oh well. Let's try Wolverine. Alright, now that's what I'm talking about. This stage is more like the first stage, but none of that power up or shit. Just punching, punching, and more punching. But, instead of going from left to right, or being completely non linear, this level almost like zigzags across while constantly moving up. I sure hope I don't fall. I keep coming into walls that look like they could be broken, but can't figure out how. But then when I came to one and couldn't go elsewhere, I discovered the claws. You have to select them. So I've been running around as Wolverine just punching shit like a turd face butthead. What a bunch of haberdashery. Oh son of a fucking bitch. Well that's all I can take. Next level. Alright, Cyclops. His controls are really awkward, particularly when shooting. What is this? Diddly Kong Racing? Odrin. Gambit, my least favorite character next to that big titted bimbo. Who is this? Indiana Gambit. Now this level is more intense, and there are projectiles coming from everywhere. Hey, when I hit this giant mace ball, it stops momentarily. Oh shit. Oh whatever. We'll give Spider-Man another shot. This level is harder than my cock during the evening newscast. If this game didn't have Spider-Man, it probably wouldn't have been released. And as a young kid, wanting to be Spider-Man in a game. I would relentlessly play the intro to this game. Good thing the music kicks ass. Final verdict, this game gets a 4.3 out of 10. 